Beard. Dat is wat je doet. Hij heeft hier ook tegen mij niet gedaan. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And today we'll be making sense of life through The King. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A historical drama based around the English invasion of France mm-hmm. and the Battle of Agincourt. There is battles, and the battles are cool. I like the one scene where the first wave of troops runs into each other. At some point, they're kind of just, it's kind of like a mosh pit. Yeah. <laughs> because you're all so tired and bogged down in bog and armor, and then you kind of just pushing each other around. There's yeah. no even real weapons. You're just kind of like, who's going to fall over first? I think a, a big theme for me in that was power and how that changes relationships with people. A lot of it is it, it kind of centers around that, not only in terms of the main character, which is King Henry V, I think. Yeah, how, how uh, for instance, the relationship between the, the future king and his close friend for a while, when he be, after he becomes king, you know, he doesn't even really see his friend. His friend ended up just hangs it out the bar a lot of the time. They have to kind of rebuild that trust and support with each other. Also, all the advisors that were part of his father's advisor team. I mean, I don't even know if they were even very trustworthy or close with his father. They're not the most loyal. I think that's the whole point of the movie, yeah. to show the complexities of being in power. Mm-hmm. And you see that in different ways for Henry when he does assume the role of king. Mm-hmm. The relationship with Sir John changes for a p- certain period of time. And it's not because Henry feels like the relationship should end or wants it to end. It's just mm-hmm. because he's completely inundated mm-hmm. with this overwhelming burden yeah. of being the king to an, in- an entire country. Yeah. And also the burden of his dad's legacy and him wanting to distance himself from, mm-hmm. from that. People who knew that they had a relationship point out, oh, well, he's king. He has no business with you now. Mm-hmm. You know, you were just for when he just was trying to have fun yeah. and East Cheap and yeah. and he was just using you. And now, now it's over because he has the power and yeah. he doesn't need you anymore, mm-hmm. which is something that does happen mm-hmm. sometimes with people. I think that's where you know whether or not the relationship was solid. Yeah, it was in this case because he comes back. And to ask him if he'd be his, yeah. his his military advisor. Yeah. Kings don't have friends. I like that line. He's like, yeah, kings, kings don't, don't have, have friends. friends. Yeah. That was great too. I don't think he... I think it aligns with what the reality is when you're in power. The not having friends. The people that you are surrounded by as a king, they are also people who are in certain uh, positions of power, like the clergy, mm-hmm. for example. And so these people, all of them, have vested interests in your ruling. And these are your advisors, but they're not, just because they're your advisors does not mean that they're altruistically yeah. advising you or supporting you or even mm-hmm. supporting you. They're just serving their own agendas, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. That might mean you getting manipulated as the yeah. king because you're the ultimate, you're the person who ultimately, mm-hmm. you know, signs off whatever yeah. decisions, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. People are dying yeah. and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. He doesn't even know why he's there because he was manipulated as we later find out mm-hmm. by one of the noblemen, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's he needs support. And Sir John is very realistic about, well, I can't chime in here. There isn't anything mm-hmm. that I have to add. And that's great too, you know, like, because he does, he does later talk about how, you know, a lot of people who are in these positions always just um, say stuff, even mm-hmm. if it's not relevant, they say it just to, to, to maintain their position, to seem mm-hmm. like they're of value. Mm-hmm. Because if you're an advisor to the king, you always have to come up with stuff. You feel like you always have to come up with stuff. Otherwise, why are you an advisor to the king? But mm-hmm. the problem is with a lot of people in those positions, they will say stuff even if it's not relevant. Yeah. And that's also very true, I think, mm-hmm. because ultimately people do worry about not feeling, not being seen to be valuable yeah. and therefore becoming disposable, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the one advisor in particular that you find out really uh, was out for his own interest to get more land. He's got the greatest like schemy advisor voice i noticed that yeah. you gotta the, the raspier the better <laughs> classic like snake-like advisor that's whispering non-truths in your ear it was great yeah. very good voice it's it, it's it's a coming of age story realistically mm-hmm. when you think about it because this guy there's so many things he doesn't want the leadership and he doesn't want the darkness that comes with the leadership that he sees his dad was consumed by malice 
mistrust for everyone mm. and the and and, now you can and, see why and england exactly so and then england is you know in shambles basically like civil war etc he comes into adulthood and just base disillusionment disillusionment mm -hmm. really because i think he had a, a romanticized idea of what leadership could look like mm -hmm. and even as i remember he goes to go to get his brother he, his brother decides okay i'm gonna go to war and he's like i am gonna go uh and try and convince mm -hmm. him out of it and he's like i'm gonna i'll i'll uh, fight this guy so that if yeah let's let's have a duel mm -hmm. so that this war does not happen and then we save a lot of these soldiers mm -hmm. And he does indeed um, fight the guy and he wins and the guy dies. That should have been that. And that, that's that. And I think this is the beginning of him transitioning to adulthood, really. Because I, he still is naive, right? Yeah. Like that contrast between him wanting peace mm -hmm. versus his dad, but then him murdering someone. Mm -hmm. He doesn't kind of realize that, you know, like this peace that he wants requires you to actually mm -hmm. murder the very to murder people for the sake of saving the lives of right. other people. Right. And so that's the beginning, I think, of him um, transitioning out of youth into adulthood mm -hmm. because the more the movie progresses, obviously he goes to war and everything. And even afterwards, when he kills the guy, the, the advisor that had been, that manipulated him into war in the first place, you know, he just does it just very like stabs him in the head, you know, mm -hmm. and it's never easy, of course, to, yeah. to murder. But just that instinct to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's where you're like, OK, this is final. And he's just kind of he, he's at that point come to terms with the reality of 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 power. Mm -hmm. It's a classic coming of King movie. And another lesson that he, he got, I think, is, you know, he tries to almost dies to save his brother and save a lot of lives from being lost needlessly. By going doing the one-on-one -on -one duel and then he, he wins and then his brother still dies because his brother you can't you know he's hoping he could control his brother's need to prove himself the brother still decided to go into battle anyway and then he died yeah. you know so it's that thing it's like you can do everything you can to try and protect people or dissuade people from things but they're gonna do what they want to do if they've made it up in their mind you know mm -hmm. yeah you can only actually control so much yeah i think it, it portrayed how hard it is to be good in the way that people that we think goodness looks um in a position of power because the guy i remember that the the bad advisor says you wanted peace so that's why i gave you mm -hmm. war so you listen to the people the crowd is yeah. happy right now no more civil strife yeah people are happy you have peace yeah you had to go basically had to go to war for that and i and that's really even though obviously this guy manipulated hell mm -hmm. into war because he had vested interests of course you know but that's also a realistic thing mm -hmm. because even outside, even before he this, he went to war with friends, he was already, you know, with that duel, killing people mm -hmm. to save other people's lives. Yeah. And so that's the thing with leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Leadership, some, a lot of the times, not sometimes, um, comes with making decisions where people get hurt mm -hmm. and you know that the decision you're going to make is going to kill other people or hurt other people in some way mm -hmm. because you can't everybody you can't save everybody no decision helps everyone yeah and so you then have to do that where either you're okay kill one person for the for the greater good or kill an entire or just go to war with an entire country for mm -hmm. your own personal mm -hmm. interest as a country mm -hmm. and so those things are hard to do and those are things that uh hell wasn't aware of when he goes into it and i think it's also really tough for someone who is really good because people do there are a lot of people that go into politics for example, in the in the modern age, these things apply in, still, still, right? Yeah. And people will go into power into politics altruistically mm -hmm. and really try their best to to do good and to support their community and be transparent. Mm -hmm. However, you aren't alone in politics. You're dealing with a whole lot of people, mm -hmm. and a lot of other people have their own interests. And so then you have to every single day you are surrounded by people that are trying to may be forcing you to go against your value system mm -hmm. and also in and sometimes you find yourself having to go against your own value system in order to pursue something that is altruistic in the end and so i think that's i don't know like uh, something that people that are good that go into power end up grappling with in a way his advisor was right in that you can achieve peace through victory but it's also easy to say from someone that, you know, is just an advisor. He's never, he's got no skin in the game apart from vested interests, yeah. right? Sometimes people think, I guess, that is some skin, like the clergyman is like, 
let's move along the siege, you know? I've got some money yeah. riding on this. So in a sense, he's got some skin in the game, but it's not physical skin. You have a lot of wars um, in history that were fought for companies, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And a lot of wars that are still fought for companies, mm -hmm. because companies. if there's war, Land, then there is ar there's a need for arm yeah. arms. And, and who makes that, those? A lot of conglomerates that benefit from these things. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes these wars are created for that. And so, but then as people, you are there thinking that this is an altruistic thing, right? You are there thinking that, oh, this is a noble cause. Mm -hmm. And um, it helps to think it's a noble cause. Yeah, it definitely does. That's why speeches are good before battle. Exactly. There is a lot. Of, I guess that speaks to the propaganda behind leadership, the need for propaganda in leadership. Mm -hmm. You want a soldier to feel powerful and confident, and so you are going to feed him or her what they need to hear mm -hmm. to give them that purpose that's yeah. going to carry them through the battle, yeah. carry them through killing someone without thinking of how awful it is to take another person's life. And overall, as citizens, even if you aren't going to war, having uh, a leader that is good at giving you that sense of purpose and idealizing going to war, mm -hmm. it gives you that sense of security. You don't, and, or, or the comfort of feeling like you aren't uh, responsible for the deaths of so many other people, but that's just the reality. And I mean, even after um, Hell finds out that they went to war for nothing, I, it, we don't see it, but you can see that he's ne he's not going to... He's just going to let it be. Yeah, he's, yeah, gonna he's marry, not going to tell yeah. everyone what yeah. happened. He's yeah, he's going to marry this girl. Yeah, He goes and says, all I want you to be is to be yeah. real and true with me. Yeah. And he has succumbed to the reality. Yeah, And, and the advisor, I think, was also right in, in the way that he's like, I gave you basically the legacy you were hoping for to become a great king. You know, look what you did. You united two kingdoms together. And then mm -hmm. he's going... Yeah. Humans get so much from stories. It can be stories can help us learn lessons, avoid mistakes, learn about who we are, where we came from. And also exactly stories can help us um, when it comes to propaganda stories. Um, it can help us relieve our soul of certain compromises or things that we put ourselves through or, or decide to do. Right. It's all these stories that we tell ourselves, whether they become rationalizations they're still stories yeah you know so stories are such a crucial part in functioning yeah as a person you know yeah stories of of, of ruling legitimacy you, you know uh, king henry has a conversation with his bride to be he was saying well you know it was we had claim over this land you know and she's like ah, no monarchy is legitimate you're the son of a usurper come on yeah. We're not, this is all made up we've all just decided that it's legitimate yeah it doesn't mean anything people who are actually in leadership positions and they're children or families they're very well aware of how little mm -hmm. lead their authority means mm -hmm. versus the people they rule over the people they rule uh, over put them on this pedestal as these um, things entities be that are above humans i think of course there is also the fact of if you are someone who is in that position obviously it depends on as well on, on the personalities because like the dauphin and hell's brother yeah. You, if you have people like that, that come from privilege, right? They are very narcissistic, realistically, <laughs> right? And they are happy to be uh, in that position where people do place them on this pedestal. And they are, they completely, you know, just milk the heck out of this mm -hmm. family, these families that they've been born into. Those are the kinds of, you, you do have that too. Mm -hmm. If you do have um, a monarchy, you would probably want someone like uh, like Hal taking over as king versus yeah. the brother. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he because... can walk the walk. He'll cool. put himself in the mud. Yeah, so that's basically all I have to say about it. All I have to say about that. What did you guys think of the king? You know, with some some other uh, things about power that uh, that you noticed about it. Let us know. Mm -hmm. And until next time, that's a wrap. <laughs>